functional works with now element 3 of perform electro installation the nodes or let me say the theory part I previously i've been showing you the videos of these uh, materials these tools these equi equi equipment in electrical field but today i'm giving you the notes so if you're a learner a trainee or a trainer then you're in the right part so today i'll be taking you through the assembling of tools equipment and materials remember preparation of the list of tools and materials is done in plan electrical installation which we are done with it if you haven't uh, you checked it out please check out just in, in this channel and also don't forget to subscribe as well as to follow me on tiktok at trainerlux and here on youtube at trainerlux too so i'll be taking you through uh, the assembling of tools equipment and material and i have started by defining what a tool is what an equipment is what an instrument and what a material is. So simply I'll be taking you through directly to what is needed. So it's just a picture of uh, basic simple tools and equipment in electrical field. We'll be tackling on some of them one on by one. And uh, even some of them have not uh, touched because the field of electrical installation is wide enough. Remember like i said we will be only focusing on a few but remember field of installation goes even up to electrical fence lacs tv and all those installations so stay put so our first tool is the screwdrivers and as we say the screwdrivers are used for driving or uh, fixing or fastening or tightening loosening of screws that's why we call the screwdriver we have different types of screwdrivers ranging with the tip of the screwdriver so if the tip is flat then that's a flat screwdriver if the tip is crossed then that's a cross screwdriver if the tip is star then that's a star screwdriver the second tool is combined electrician pliers and uh, its work is to cut twist bend and hold and sometimes also grip wires so when you have a, 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 a big size wire you are likely to use uh, pliers too to cut it we also have a bending spring a bending spring is used for bending a pvc conduit as for the a, a metal conduit we use bending machine or conduit bender and then we have a hammer and this kind of hammer is claw hammer is used for driving uh, nails through wooden or, or walls and that manner we also have other uh, hammers that are very essential in electrical work the ballpen hammer for the clips the muscle hammer that we usually use for chess work uh, making uh, traces or holes on the wall where we are going to lay our conduits we also have a wire stripper as you can see this one is for removing insulation from cables stripping is to remove the cutting the second, uh, the other tool we have is a hacksaw. This one is for cutting metal conduits, armored cable, and also sometimes we use this to cut a uh, PVC conduit. We also have electric drill, uh, is for making holes in building structures, especially when you want to fix your screws. Also, we can use electric drill to nowadays to uh, as a as a screwdriver. So we are using a power drill. To, to drive or fasten screws in that manner. Then we have draw tape or fish tape. Yes, I know in the, uh, during uh, when you're inside, you hear people calling it steel tape. That's not steel tape. That's a draw wire or fish tape. It's used for drawing cord uh, cables in conduit. We also have a soldering gun, which is part of soldering equipment. And soldering equipment is for soldering of electrical joints. As well as mounting of elect electronics components, and uh, uh, the reason why I'm calling soldering equipment because uh, it comes with a set of soldering tools that uh, aid in soldering operation. So we have soldering gun, which is the one that is mounting. We have the soldering gun, or sometimes we call it solder sucker, for moving the solder. We have the solder wire itself. We have the solder stand for the gun. We have the solder sponge. All that are part of soldering equipment. Then we have the long nose. Uh, pliers. This one is used for cutting and holding wires, especially when you're trying to reach a, a cable 
that is inside the conduit has not the tip has not come out so we use the long nose plus still ongoing we have cutting plus it's a with sharp edge uh, is used for cutting thick electrical uh, wires let's say electrical wire that with the greater sizes if you're talking of 10 square millimeter we use this we also have uh, electronic pliers or micro pliers uh, this one is a unique plus in most cases and is useful for cutting delicate electronic compla components in on a circuit board or a printer board we also have bent nose pliers I uh, have yours bent at an angle near the tip for helping reach tight spaces eh? where where your hand or your fingers cannot reach that's its work we also have what we call the wire crimper so this one is a crimping tool and when I say crimping is to join uh, uh, the the conductor to a connector, so we use crimping tools. We also have another crimping tool for the for the Ethernet uh, wires during CCTV installation or any networking job. That is for another day. We also have electrician knife, and uh, this one is just for cutting oscillation in that manner. We have tape measure. Uh, used to measure the length and also to get the dimension of the structure of uh, a plants or a machine or a material we have a circuit finder or analyzer I have this one we used to trace if you are not the one who did the installation in a building but you want to know if there's a circuit uh, there's a final circuit within the wall or that you use the circuit finder or the circuit analyzer in that case and then we have the spirit level usually used to find if the 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 equipment not the the material we install is on level is it level horizontally or vertically so there's a an air gap in the fluid which is enclosed in the the edge of flat spirit level we, we just you see if the the air bubble is at the middle at the exact center that's when we can conclude that whatever you have installed is a level you have side cutter have stock and die have allen wrench uh, when wrench we just call it a set of allen keys we have a ladder and we have digital multimeter among others so it's very important that uh, while you're assembling these tools you know that a uh, certain tool is for certain job that's what actually why this uh, topic is very session uh, it is to help you understand that if i'm going to carry out a given installation Today I'm going to do maybe let's say I'm going to install a machine. I'm going to install maybe let's say a water pump. What kind of tools do I need? Mm? What kind of equipments do I need for this job? And what are the materials that I'm going to interact with? That's why you need to be familiar with this in order for you to be easy to assemble. Because if you know it's easy for you to gather these tools together, these materials together and make your work easy. So it's good also to maintain the tools and the equipments that you have. Uh, just a few tips here, five of them, to ensure that you take good care of your tools and maintenance. And let me take you through the materials. Materials is wide field as well. And even in this chapter, I, on this video, I'm only capturing part one. I'll be coming with part two on solar materials. I'll be coming with also materials for machine installation in that manner. So stay put just subscribe for more so i'll be starting with the cables and conductors so a conductor is a material which allows current to flow through it and a cable is a is a conductor covered in insulation or covered with insulation so we have various types of conductors one is depending on the nature of and the type of material so we have the copper conductors we have the aluminium conductors we also have the steel galvanized steel cadmium copper among other conductors but for this installation with domestic installation and industrial installation work we're just going to focus on a few then we have based on construction we have the solid drone conductor where we find just is a say one single conductor with a circular cross-sectional area then we have stranded conductor where you find the number of conductors have been placed together and then spiraled in opposite direction we also have uh, uh, cables as an interview remember i've said the difference between cable and conductor so we have polyvinyl 
chloride cable, the most common cable for most of our installation work, the PVC cables. Then we also have another similar but uh, different version we call the tough rubber seat cable. We also have chloropin uh, uh, cable, the PCP, and we have the high resistance oil resisting or flame bread tartan cables. Then we have flexible cables in that manner. And then we also have multiple cable. When now we go in construction, we have multiple cables. You find that uh, uh, two or three of uh, four cables have been again uh, insulated together. So that's what makes it multiple cable. But if you just get a, a cable, a, a conductor with the insulation, that's a single cable, single core cable. Then we also have flexible cord. Uh, cord is a very flexible cable. And a cord, uh, is, uh, as, is, as you can see, is defined as a construction area that does not exceed a uh, four square millimeter. Then you have other kind of flexible cables like the twisted twin flexible cable. Then we have the armored cable, which we use for underground work. And we use it for places where damage to cable is likely to occur. Then we also have mineral insulated metal seat cable, the MIMS cable, which I've not covered much on it, but in the next image I've shown you how they really look like. As you can see, we have a armored cable, then below it we have the mineral insulated metal cable, and then at the other end we just have the single core cable and the multiple cable, and we have not even given the illustration with the a stranded cable, but as you can see on the armored cable, uh, you'll see the, the cables the, that are inside this uh, steel wire brand, the cables are stranded. Those are examples of stranded cables. Quickly, let's go to enclosures. Enclosures, these are things that are, uh, are there to protect the cables. So, in this manner, we have three that we usually use. We have the conduit. Yeah, the one you refer to in most cases as pipes. We don't call pipes in electrical, we call them conduits. Pipes is a term that we use when you're doing with plumping. So conduit is a tube, is a channel or a pipe in which insulated conductors are contained. So you have many types of conduits, but I'm not also going to focus on a lot. So I'm going to focus on the metallic conduit. And the most common metallic conduit that we use is the electric Electrical metallic tubing EMT uh, is a thin metallic conduit that we normally use in a lot of industrial installation. We also have other kind of uh, metallic conduit, the rigid metallic conduit, have the galvanized, we have the intermediate metallic tubing. So in that manner, we have many kind of tubing and uh, conduits in that manner. We also have PVC conduits the polyvinyl chloride conduits and the one we refer to as plastic but in here is good when you call it thermoplastic conduit or thermoplastic cables as we have said before you'll be meaning the same thing so in this manner we have uh, pvc which goes with a lot of pvc accessories and uh, which is also suitable for more of domestic installation and then we have the, the flexible metal conduit and uh, we also have a uh, flexible uh, uh, PVC conduits, uh, the one that are very flexible. But now we don't use it in most cases for uh, electrical work. But uh, for metal, yes, we use it. And uh, for each case, we have shown where it's applicable. Then we go to an, a second enclosure, which is trunking, uh, which is a, a same enclosure but with rectangular. Uh, cross section. The other one is circular, giving the shape of pipe. This one is rectangular, and even the third one that we'll be talking about, the cable trays, is also rectangular. But what's the difference between the two? One has a, a lid, and the other one usually is just open. So with trunking, you have different kinds of trunking. As we've seen, we have self-adhesive mini trunking. We have equipped mini trunking. We have cable and equipped retainer. We have skirt and dado trunking equipped load trunking in that manner. We also have plastic trunking or the PVC trunking in that manner. And uh, we are going to see later with these accessories. 
and then we have cable trays and these cable trays as i've said in most cases cable trays are metallic and uh, if you get we have also different types of cable trays as it as you can see and then here we are just talking of accessories so we are starting with the accessories in conduits the accompaniment that comes with conduit when you're doing conduit installation uh, as a wiring system then these accompaniments are very essential like the boxes we have the circular boxes from end box or the, the one we usually call one way then we have two way which is also through box and we also have two way which is angle box making an angle of 90 then you have a three way box or sometimes we call it t box then you have four way box which is sometimes called a three way uh, box uh, then we have the lid cover for the boxes as well then we have saddle clips and in saddle clips, we have different kinds of saddle clips. We have space bar saddle clips, like the ones here you can see here. And then we have the U saddle clips. Yes, we also have sockets. In other cases, you find this socket, we are firing to it on site as couplers, but uh, you'll see couplers later and so the, see the difference. We also have elbow, we have bends, and then we have inspection T. Yes, all those are accessories that come with, uh, that comes with the conduits. On the other side, you can see the types of electro conduits with the names. As you can see, all the metal conduits have been highlighted there. The ones I was talking about. Quickly, let's go to the trunking accessories. So the trunking accessories, as you can see, you can see also a lot of it. But also, what I've not named in previous uh, slide is that uh, also these is not all accessories we have the mk boxes uh, the the one that we use for switch and socket boxes yes we have the single and twin mk boxes and then also for trunking other than the what you can see here we also have a uh, the patrices yeah we have the shallow and deep patrices we have the twin patrices and single patrices in that manner on the other end you can see now the couplers on the accessories with to do with the cable trays you can see the couplers there and the, you can see now what the couplers uh, is made for, as it is. So, all these are accessories that come for, for the work to do with the enclosures. So, in addition, we also have other things that also play a good role in electrical installation, like the insulating tapes. Yes, you as an electrician, it's not your money to buy these. These you can charge the the client because it's going to be used it's going to be consumed in the installation it's good that when you're planning on material you also budget for insulating or insulation tapes and then we also have the junction box this one in most cases uh, we usually confuse it with the, the circular boxes the one i've been showing you the end box the through box but this is how a junction box looks like it allows you to make a lot of joints and reduce the distance of travel from the final circuit and, and wherever it is going and then uh, we also have protective devices like we have the fuse we have the circuit breakers among the rest so i think for today i'll say let's stop at this point but part two is coming remember i'll not be tackling to things to do with switches in the video i was showing you before i, I actually talked on well on switches so uh, when i what you're expecting is that i'll be bringing more to do with the uh, machines and solar installation for the cctv as well let's preserve it for another day thank you for your time